Hi there. It's been a year since I sat down in front of you and did a blog about how much I love the cheerleaders of the CFL. I rewatched it and quite frankly, I thought it was pretty good and I was gonna do just a nice little intro and rerun it again so you could see it. I mean, the background's the same. I didn't have the beard, but the sentiments I felt then, I still feel now. I was doing a review of the Calgary Stampeders uh, cheer, cheer, uh, cheerleading calendar that uh, their great photographer, Mark Many had sent to me. I spoke about the fact that the women and men do a lot for the, the, the communities across Canada. I talked about how proud we should all be of the cheerleaders of the CFL. And all of those things still ring true to me in the fall of 2015. Now, those of you who have been following my blogs know that over the course of this season, I've had the opportunity of sitting down with the majority of um, dance and cheer team members from the Ottawa Red Blacks. Over the course of, of uh, several weeks, you've gotten to know the fantastic men and women who represent the Ottawa cheer team. We've met people who are going off to become doctors. We've met people who are in school studying criminology. We've met veterinary assistants. We've met people who handle, um, who handle you know, trade shows. People who do a plethora of different things. They all might have different backgrounds, but one of the things that uh, seem to bring them all together is their sense of community and their selflessness. I could say that about the Auto Red Blacks cheer and dance team the same way I could say that about the Outrider dance team or the Eskimos cheer team or the Felines or the Blue Lightning in Winnipeg or the Argos cheerleaders or the Owls cheerleaders or the Hamilton cheerleaders. We are very blessed being here uh, in Canada having such phenomenal representation of our cheer and dance teams across the CFL. Over the course of um, the years of myself being a fan, I've had the opportunity of meeting a lot of fantastic people. I've got to meet personnel within the CFL. I've got the chance to meet coaches and former players and present players. I've got to meet fantastic fans across the league who love this game as much as I do, or close anyways. And I've had the opportunity of meeting some really fantastic cheerleaders. It's always interesting to me to sit back and take note of the hard work that they do and to think of all of the time that they give up to entertain us and to put smiles on our faces and more so to put smiles on our on uh, on kid kids faces um, I had a conversation with one of the girls from the Red Blacks earlier this year and she was tell from the Red Blacks cheer team earlier this year and she was saying to me it's very important when she's at an event you know to make sure that she's spending a lot of time with little girls and she said when she went to a football games when she was younger and she looked around for female representation it was in the cheerleaders and that kind of left me thinking so sure, as a guy, it was easy for me to go to football games as a little kid with my mom and dad and look at the football players on the field and think to myself, maybe I don't want to do that one day. But if you're a girl and you go to these football games, well, what do you think about? I mean, there's nothing to say that you can't go and start throwing a football around, but there's no real women's professional football league. So you look at the cheerleaders, and I don't necessarily think that that's a bad second place or a bad alternative. Quite frankly, I look at the cheerleaders with so much respect. I can't begin to tell you how much respect. The amount of things that they do that we don't even know about and we don't even get the chance to see from a, from a, from a, a Commons fan, fan's perspective just will just blow your mind. It's very easy. We see them run out onto the field. They do about a 60-minute dance segment, and then they run off, and then we go back to the game. What we don't see is the fact that that 60 minute or that 60 second dance segment probably took them hours of practice. We don't know about the fact that they leave their jobs, they go to a practice, they finish it up, and then they probably go home and study or get ready for their next day of work. Let's look at this past Sunday, for example. The Eastern Final here in Ottawa. You had the Red Blacks taking on Hamilton, and of course, Ottawa won, and the city went into a frenzy. What did I do? I came home and I watched... The, uh, the remaining bits of the Calgary-Edmonton game, probably had dinner and went to bed. Do you know what the Red Blacks cheer and dance team did? They celebrated, then they headed off. They had a practice that night to get ready for Grey Cup and um, cheer extravaganza and all the other Grey Cup festivities. And then they had another practice on Monday. I'm not telling you this because they want me to tell you this and quite frankly, they don't script anything that I say to you. I'm saying this because it just goes, go, just goes to show the level of dedication that they have. But that isn't just Ottawa, because I can assure you, the other eight cheer teams are getting ready for this week at Grey Cup as well. Now, for those of you who've been to Grey Cup and Grey Cup week, there are a lot of exciting events that you can go to. 
other than the game for myself, some of the top events are, and in no particular order, the State of the League, where the commissioner, which was started by Mark Cohan and, and now Jeffrey Orridge is carrying it on, the, the commissioner sits down with the fans and has an open dialogue about things that are happening in the CFL, as well as answers the fans' questions, which I think is amazing because it just gives that extra interaction between the, the CFL and the fans, something that makes us very unique. So I absolutely love love that event. I absolutely love the Grey Cup Parade. And, you know, being in Canada, it's not always the warmest experience, but it's such a great celebration of our football culture and seeing the different, you know, representatives from the different teams and fans in a parade. And one event that I know is extremely popular with a lot of people that I know is Cheer Extravaganza. Cheer Extravaganza is an opportunity for all nine cheer uh, cheerleading teams to come and do a five to ten minute routine uh, for fans. It isn't a competition. We're not voting on who's the best or what have you. It's just an opportunity to see them all come and strut their stuff and do what they do uh, week in and week out to entertain us. Um, one of the really fantastic things about it is I've been to cheer, I've been to cheer extravaganza, ex, ex, cheer extravaganzas for years, and it's always great seeing the camaraderie between the cheer teams. Now you'll see you'll see some some uh, some tweets going back between different teams before games. But the tweets that you see between the cheerleaders are usually, hey, good luck, have an awesome game, you're going to kill it out there. It's absolutely endearing and wonderfully sweet to see. So this time of year, I like to take my hat off to all of the men and women who dance for us, who entertain us, who even though our team might be losing, you wouldn't know it by looking at them because their smiles are still on and they're making sure that we're having a good time. But more so than that, I take my hat off to them for all of the fantastic work that they do in our communities. I take my hat off to them for all the sacrifices that they've had to make, the events that they've had to miss, the weddings, the parties, the get-togethers that they've had to miss because they were at practice, because they were working hard to make sure that their, that their act was on point when they hit the field. I salute the coaches of these teams. I salute the people who were involved with them, who get them ready for Grey Cup. And I just want you to know, as one of the biggest fans of this league, I'm one of your biggest fans as well, and I sincerely appreciate everything you all do. Um, again, as I mentioned last year, one of the big fundraisings for uh, or fundraisers, fundraisings, fundraisers for the uh, for the cheerleaders is selling their calendars. I think it's very important if you see them to to, to chip in and and buy their calendar and support them because this is probably one of the biggest fundraising tools that they all use to get to Grey Cup. Um, I think it's great. I think it's a, a, it's definitely a worthwhile thing to do. And don't be cheap. If you see them, go over, say hi, and ask to buy a calendar from them. Because Keith said so. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate you taking the time to watch this. I think it's very important that you understand and appreciate all of the hard work that they do. And I think they're fantastic. Um, regardless of what team they cheer for, um, at the end of the day, they're doing everything they can to make our community, this country, better. And I really appreciate it. CFL underscore fan on Twitter is how you can get a hold of me. Facebook.com slash Witty Whittier and Witty Whittier.com. I appreciate you taking the time to check this out. And that's my view from the 40.